Hey guys, I picked up a project from Banggood. This is the LM317 Adjustable Voltage Power Supply Module Kit. This is just a DIY type of project that you can put together. If you are wanting to pick one of these up, uh, please do note this is only good for like low-end type of power stuff. It will drop its voltage, um, so just keep that in mind if you are going to pick this up. If you are wanting a how-to video, uh, you can follow along. I'm doing mine a little bit different than other people have, so just bear with it as best as you can, all right? Uh, but enjoy! Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a project, um, just a little circuit board type of project here, solder everything together. This here is the Geekrete. Basically what it is is this uh, adjustable voltage power supply kit. So I can take like 12 volt down to 1 volt. Uh, just helpful for any type of little projects I want to do, maybe something on a breadboard or whatever. So I already have everything set up here. I already tested the ohms on these resistors because I'm going to need to know exactly the ohms on them find out where the heck they go hopefully this thing can be trusted I don't really like the Mastercraft version of a multimeter I hate it I'm gonna to have to get something else so hopefully it will it's right and uh, it's registered uh, the ohms correctly on these resistors um, everything seems to check out I've already checked um, I already checked everything over, so all I just got to do is just solder everything and put it together. So I'm going to install these diodes first. I will be sticking into this board first. Anyways, there's a little white line here that will tell me the direction on the board. Right there. So I just got to stick them in there and then solder them into place. Try to make them look pretty. And this one as well. I uh, do now is just solder them into place. All I just gotta do is just snip off the ends here. I'm gonna keep these ends, uh, just at least three of them. So I'm gonna be using that on the the voltage meter. Don't like how they're sitting, but. I'm just very, very picky how things sit. So the next one I'm going to do, I guess, is... Now they all have marks on them, so the black mark will line up to the lines. Just the same as the diodes and the resistors doesn't matter. It's just these little fellas. So far it should look like this. There's one thing I wish Bang Good would have actually did is they should have marked off these resistors, but they didn't do that. So what I had to do is I grabbed my multimeter. I ended up sticking it into my my ohms. And uh, I just tested all these. So this one is 100 k this is 1K, this is uh, 240 this one here is 10 so you got to make sure to test it obviously since they don't actually mark them which I find is really stupid but hey it's better to actually test your stuff before you start soldering it together hopefully like I said that multimeter is correct and I don't actually make this thing go pop so I'm going to install the 240 ohm first this one actually has a yellow line on it if you're not really sure either you can there is an app that you can get I paid for it. It's called Electroid. So yeah, this here will actually show you resistor and a bunch of other stuff. So I highly recommend this app if you're not sure. Um, although it was kind of useless to me. And there is a spot here that says 240. It's right beside the two that I just put in. Right in that spot. So that's where it's going to go. Now with a resistor, it doesn't matter what direction. Well, I guess the next one up is 100K. 
which is this fella here. Now it only seems to be that there's one that needs to go on the board, so it's kind of nice that they give you extra, just in case. Is marked on the board as well. You can see it right there. All right, now I'm also going to add 1K, which goes just above that one. All right, I'm just going to solder them in the place. Now, I'm going to work with a, a 10K. And that one goes, goes right there. Place. So there's a couple more places on this board for a 1K resistor. As you can see, there's two spots right there. Again, um, as a reminder, with resistors, it doesn't matter what direction they go. And maybe one more useful uh, thing is always put your tip on the connection first and then put solder on that connection. It sticks better that way. Don't just put solder on the tip because that doesn't help. Okay, so it looks like we have all the resistors in the place now. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to do them first before anything else bigger. That way you don't push down on anything bigger. Pretty simple. Pretty much tells you everything, um, where everything goes. Alright, so we're going to work with the LEDs now. Um, it says on the board exactly where they go. Uh, it says here B, Y, R, G. So that's blue, yellow, red, and green pretty easy and it says positive here uh, remember with LEDs that the longest lead on the LED is the positive end so this is how it should look focus here we'll flip this board around so you can see it from the back end have two touching each other. I'm gonna have to fix that. I'm just gonna use my pump real quick and redo it. Perfect. Uh, this one here needs a little more solder. It's always nice to have a pump, by the way, if you ever need one. I'm just going to bend these things back up a little bit. Double check to make sure that all your solder is not touching each other and making a bad connection because you don't want that to happen. Okay, so the next step is the socket holder. That would go right here. Right here. Keep in mind that little notch at the top that's the exact same notch that you gotta line up with the notch on this right here as you can see it's up on the top edge so make sure that you have it correct if you are actually going to get this board um, for the socket it doesn't really matter you just put that in there just make sure that nothing's bent I had to actually straighten everything out because a lot of this was actually bent when I got it just put a little bit of solder on one of the ends here. That's just going to hold it in place. Just move. What I'm doing at the bottom here is I'm going to push up. Well, I'm going to re-solder that. That way it sits better. We'll do the same on the other side. Yeah, so those two areas I just soldered is actually holding it onto the board now. That way it's perfectly tight on the board. Now I can just go ahead and put solder on every single end. So yeah, there we go. Socket's in the place now. We can actually put this chip on. Like I said, just make sure that it is facing the right direction. As you can see where the notch is right there. So 
to make sure that it's facing the correct direction. Well, I guess we can go ahead and do these blue pieces now. It shows you on the board exactly where they go. Two here, three here. Make sure the uh, that end is facing out up from the board. I'm not even going to bother snipping these ones. Okay. So it should look like this when you're done soldering. So we are going to put this variable resistor, put this thing inside the board. It shows you exactly where it's going. Right here, this is where it's got to go. And it's pretty easy to understand exactly where it goes because you can see the curve right here and it's flat on the bottom. It's showing the exact same layout of this. It's curved on top and flat on the bottom. So that one's done. As you can see, it's been soldered on the other side of the board as well. Let's do the, the piezo, I think is what this thing's called. Piezo speaker. The lead is a little bit larger. The larger one is obviously the positive side, which obviously the tape shows you that as well. And on the board, where it goes, is right here. And it shows you on the board, it's also positive there. So we'll put that in next. Alright, I'm going to have to push up against it as well, just to kind of make it sit better on the board. sitting properly now it's sitting properly all right so i think the next step would be is to put these capacitors in here um these ones here you actually do got to worry about what direction that they go um as you can see the gold mark right here is the negative um that is the lines right here you'll see on the board these lines is the negative side and that's the positive side so the positive lead is always the longest part give me my solder back since you're better than my other ones to get right in there I shoot everything everywhere all right now we will put these electrolytic capacitors in these ones here don't matter what direction they go the little brown fellas you put them in any any old direction you want I'm going to have the text facing out from here just because I think it would look a lot better like that. And they don't have to go all the way down to the bottom of the board. They can stay up a little bit. People want to stop bugging me. <sighs> People are apparently bugging me. Do you guys mind? Leave me alone. <laughs> Alright. So we can solder on these fellas. So as you can see, they are now into place. Right there. And right over there. Yeah. Well, I think the next stop would be this transistor right here. This little fella. Now, this one is actually going to be easy as well because you can take a look. Uh, from the edges here one side's flat and then one side it's got a round curve on it now that goes right by that piezo speaker right here see in the corner and it also shows it's got a round curve there and a flat end so it's pretty easy to figure that out curve on the outside flat end on the inside we're just gonna have to bend this thing into place I just gotta solder it into place. Well, I think the potentiometer would be next. That's this little fella. I make sure it's facing out from the board. Because this is my future self. Just wanting to let you know, don't let this potentiometer sit completely flat with the board because of the fact that when you put this uh, front casing on, that you may have to do some adjustments with your soldering. So just keep that in mind, all right? This leave a little bit of a gap as you can kind of roughly see one here. I'm not going to cut off the ends here. I'm just going to leave them as is for now. Now since we have something to kind of protect one of the capacitors, we will put this in next. Yeah, these snips do a lot better than these bigger ones. Yeah, that's it. Let's straighten that out. 
And there is one other spot that you would want to put this one onto that is located right here. Same thing, white area, white line. Okay, yeah. well, you're crooked. Okay, I don't want to really pull on that one. I'm going to have to leave it crooked. Alright, so this is my camera froze. Huh. It actually froze. You guys got to catch that. Camera's working again. Uh, that's the first time that uh, it was... It froze like that, ever. So the next thing you gotta do is put the voltage regulator onto this heat sink. I recommend at least getting some type of thermal paste. Sink that I've had here for quite a few years, so hopefully it's somewhat good. If not, I have uh, thermal tape. Um, it's just best to use that. I've always seen these with at least some type of grease. Some type of thermal grease. I guess I gotta find screws for that. Oh boy. I don't know what's what yet. I'm going to have to figure this out. The casing is the most annoying part that I'm going to have to figure out. Putting the case together? I don't know. I don't even know what screw goes where. What's what here? We've got these screws all look the same. Let me just separate these screws and figure it out from there. Alright, well I kind of figured out the screws. There's actually two sizes of screws. I'll show you that with the camera. There's larger size, small size, we got spacers, we got smaller nuts, we got really small nuts. And no, don't think dirty. I'm just talking about freaking screw nuts. Alright. The internet has ruined me. So there's thermal grease on here. Oh boy. That's been sitting for a while. Um, I gotta stir it up. This thermal paste, man, has been sitting for a very long time. Uh, this is the first time I'm actually being able to use it, and I've had this stuff for nine years. <laughs> Something like that. That doesn't look too bad. Technically, that's how I have it set up. I'm gonna stick it on here. I guess I don't need another nut on the other side here. I just have to grab one of the largest screws. As you can see, there's a little bit of thermal paste in between those two. Uh, this is not tightened. It's a little bit loose because of the fact that I need to put this thing in here properly. Let's solder the heat sink in here first. I'm just doing one side. I'm going to push down on it. There we go. That just helps push it up against the board. I'm happy with that. So far, this is exactly what it should look like. Right there. Uh, the other side of the board. Right here. Looks pretty good. Alright, so now I can take this thing out of the static bag. I don't want these wires on here. Um, we are going to actually use uh, some of the pieces we cut. Let's take this off. One off, two off, and third one is off. Fourth one's almost off. There you go. Zoom in so you can see it a little better. Alright. So I think it's a lot better to do something like this. We're going to have to put some spacers in here. So I'm looking at Banggood's website here and just having a look at how their voltage meter is. Uh, look at this. They got a not here, a nut here, and a nut there, just to separate it. But they they also have the wires here, so I'm not doing that. Okay, this is my future self. I just wanted to let you guys know that you are going to have to shave um, these screws here um, if you're going to be following it my way. I'll show you the exact same size. 
I thought I'd show you how much I've actually taken off that screw. That way if you want to do the same, as you see I have it flush right there. So make sure you take off that much. I'm going to have to put this thing on since these screws are now shaved. I'll just put uh, the screw on here. And then I'll put the spacer on next. And I will do the same to the other one as well. Just make sure you check your where your wires are going. All right, when everything is sitting properly, if you take a look at the screw, we have a spacer. The screw has been trimmed down to be about roughly the uh, the nut size. Okay, I just wanted to let you know that uh, when you do put these spacers in here and you screw it down to the other side of the board, make sure that you solder these pins on the other side. As I seem to have forgotten to show you that. Alright, so this is bottom. Wait, which one's bottom? I kind of marked these already. Just got to peel this stuff off now. Alright, now since this thing is just sitting, it's not screwed in. It's just sitting like this. Uh, I have screws on the other side of the bottom. I have a spacer, and this is just temporarily sitting on top. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show you how this is going to be laid out. So the red here are actually coming in from the main, and the blue is the 12 volt. Uh, I like to have it straight like this, straight up to the wires that are in here. I will show you that up close. If you take a look at those two right there, that is where the transformer is going to be connected to, the two blue ones. It doesn't really matter what direction it goes. So the way that it's sitting, like this, the blue is going to be connected to the one on the far side near the capacitor. And then the other blue will be connected closer towards me. So this is how I'm going to have it sitting, like that pretty straightforward anyways uh, I think there's two more spacers maybe I guess not there's only one they they slacked off and they give me another that kind of sucks but oh well let's move you off to the side here we are going to screw this thing into place now I'm just gonna move the camera up closer so that way you guys can see it so there's four screws right here that I want to screw in like I said just make sure that you have spacers um, here here and all the way around uh, the screw heads are at the very bottom and we'll just put the nuts on the top and this will go on next it's also going to be screwed in at the bottom so it should look like this as you can see we have it screwed like that if yours came with another spacer, then I recommend putting a spacer in there, but apparently I only have one extra. So I have no idea what they did there and why they did that. I guess they don't check uh, how many spacers you need, but yeah. So yeah, these two go out to the main. These two blue ones go into this. Uh, just kind of somewhat neat in it. Hi, it's my future self again. Don't you love it? I keep popping up everywhere inside this video. I just want to let you guys know that you should actually be installing the mains cord. That way you could test your project to make sure it works. Because if it doesn't, then, well, you're most likely going to have to fix it. But if you're brave enough and you think that it's going to work, stick to the video and don't skip ahead to the point where I actually install this. Mm. All right, so we are going to be putting this thing together potentiometer is kind of crooked um, talking about the potentiometer you're gonna have to do a little bit of tweaking uh, when you actually try to fit this thing all together it may be too far down um, like mine was I had to do this off a of cam where I had to just lift up the solder a little bit and just kind of pull it off the board just a tad um, so just keep that in mind you may have to do a little bit of tweaking not that bad though but if you get um, right the first time then good for you so we'll put the front on. The front, um, you can screw this little nut on. It's a little large nut that goes onto the potentiometer. Just be very careful that way you don't bend this off. 
because that's the only thing that's holding it together. Ah, there's a little pinhole. When you're putting these screws in, you'll see tiny little pinholes that you just slide the smallest screw inside. And this is where you would put that little nut right there, and then you just screw it into place. So the next part, um, I didn't put all the screws in here. I just put one there, 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 there. Bottom and here, I left this side open for a couple of reasons. I want to try to clean the inside, and I don't want to put it all together just yet because I may have to take it apart if there's something wrong with it. This is the part where I was telling you to skip ahead to install this cord right here. Um, it would be more smarter if you guys don't put the case on it yet and just test it to make sure it works. Uh, but I, th I'm thinking that it, it's good. I'm guessing that it's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But uh, I'm gonna put the sleeve on here. This heat shrink. You're gonna need a lighter. Um, you can actually use a soldering gun too and just wipe it across it, and that should shrink. I've done that multiple times. Uh, this doesn't really matter either. There's no polarity on this, uh, so you can just put it the way you want, but I'm picky. I'm just going to twist them up, and I'm going to put a little bit of solder onto it. Looks good. It ain't going to come off. Now I'm going to push it about center. Same thing with the other one. I have to do with that. Um, I should actually test this thing before I put that casing on. Out, but before I do that, uh, the next part will be these clamps here. Um, just going to take these rubbers off. There we go. They just get in the way. I'm just going to split this a bit, this wire. You can always change out wires. You don't have to have something so small like this. if you can take a look and I'm just gonna fit it inside like so if you take a look right there I have some solder in there so it's so everything is now done uh, this is finished it's been tinted on that side uh, I put the jackets back on there I think that's it I'm gonna test this thing and see if it blows up in my face or not hopefully not but we'll see well it turns on 13 volts. So it goes to 120. Hmm. How much can we bring out of here? 14 volts I can get out of this. One of the LED lights aren't working. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it's because uh, how it's laid out, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to put a test on this thing and we'll find out. So I'm just going to let you guys have a look at it like this for now. I just want to test to find out if the polarity is correct for where I'm going to put the red and black wire. I'm going to turn it on. Right now it says it's about 1.20. And we'll see if it says the same on that, which you can barely see, but... Um, I need to also find out. So that's a negative. So this is positive on that side. I know that the back side is the positive end. That is this hole positive, and then the one right beside it is negative. So you can kind of see it right there. My meter is saying 1.26. That is saying 1.20. So it's not accurate. It says 1.30. 26. So 14 volts. It's fluctuating between there. So I've been messing around with this thing since last night just to kind of figure out exactly what I can do with it. And I can definitely tell you that uh, as soon as you put a load on this thing, it will drop to about roughly. Um, 8 volts 
that's if you have the potentiometer all the way to the max. So keep that in mind, you're not going to get actually 14 volts out of here. I think it might have something to do with the transformer being weak. I'm sure if you replace this thing, uh, that won't be an issue. But I'm not really sure on that thing. Um, i probably have to replace that and find that out. But I am going to be doing a review on here. I, I definitely figured out that this LED light is for one of the pins. That I'm not really sure what it's for yet. As you can see, it turns on for that. Um, if you take a look, we can change the LED light speed. As you can see, it's blinking right now. We can speed that up, make it go faster. Now, if you say you want something to flicker, as an example, say an LED light, to do exactly that as you see right there, uh, I found out this port right here and either one of these will actually make an LED light flash like that. So if you want to make something pulse, uh, that's really nice. I'm not really sure what this pin or that pin does. I'm going to have to see if I can figure out any information on that. If I if I do, I will put it in a review. If not, then I'm most likely going to mention that. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad little thing. Um, just keep in mind that you're not going to get 14 volts out of this as soon as you put on a load. Um, it's cool though. Nice, neat little project. But anyways, hopefully you liked the video. And if you did follow the touch, hopefully it was easy enough for you to understand. And uh, please do subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.